Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another week of Astros Recap. Your boy here, David Artis, here to break things down. It is Sunday, September 29th, 10.41 p.m., and the Astros have wrapped up the regular season. All 27 weeks in the books, or more specifically, 27 Sundays of regular season baseball. So, exciting. Astros will have to wait till Friday for their first postseason game. Though, you know, we'll be watching other baseball. Nothing will be played tomorrow because there are no tiebreakers to work out. So, day off for everybody. And then you'll have the NL wildcard game on Tuesday, the AL wildcard game on Wednesday, and then you'll roll into the division series Thursday, Friday, and so on and so forth. But anyway, so... The Astros this week played very well, so they had the off day Monday, short two games set with Seattle, in which they won both, and then they go to Los Angeles, Anaheim, whatever you want to call it, and they take three of four, so they did exactly what you'd want them to do um, after winning the division, wrapping that up the prior week. Uh, the goal of this week was to wrap up home field throughout the playoffs, and they did just that, so, <clears throat> excuse me, but, yeah, so they finished their season, 107 up, 55 down, uh, overachieved, I would say, um, I'm a little surprised they were as good as they were, but, I mean, what can you say, that's a phenomenal season, um, you know, we've broken our regular season win-loss total the last two years. So in 17, you know, you win 101 and are out to their first ever World Series. But their all-time win total was 102. So winning 103 in 18 set their new uh, regular season record. And then this year, 107. So, I mean, it, it's just been a phenomenal year. Hats off to all guys who helped us with those wins. I'll give A.J. Hinch credit for uh, managing us to 107 wins and we go into the playoffs I uh, would I mean we're the team to beat we got the home field advantage throughout every series we will be playing in and I mean we're gonna be playing good teams we know that but we're not gonna be scared of anybody we'll respect the teams we play but we also know we're better especially you know, when we're at full health which you know I can get into in a little bit here but for the most part we are um, as healthy as we possibly could be. So yeah, two important things going into the playoffs. One, of course, uh, having home field, which we do have. The other, which is probably more important, is being uh, healthy, you know, your full roster being healthy. And we do have that as well. So, I mean, there's questions, and we'll talk about that uh, soon enough here. But, you know, I, I could take you through the week, but, you know, just – I mean, I don't want to waste too much time. I sort of want to set up uh, the postseason more so uh, here in the coming minutes rather than breaking down the week. Uh, I can give you some numbers here. So, you know, Garrett Cole and uh, Verlander got their final two starts here uh, Saturday, Verlander, Sunday with Cole. So to wrap up their regular season numbers, uh, I believe Justin Verlander went 21-6. and six with a 2.58 ERA. And he went over the 300 strikeout, I think, I want to say that. He got 3,000 for his career, but let's see if I can find this number here. Through, let's see, three, Kelly. All right, um, 300 on the dot strikeouts this year, so. Whip at point eight zero, he threw two hundred and twenty three innings. Like I said, twenty one six two point five eight ERA, and then you compare that to Cole, who pitched today. Cole's twenty and five with a two point five zero ERA. He threw three hundred and twenty six strikeouts. Whip is point zero nine higher than Verlander's point eight nine and 212 innings. I would give the uh, 
slight edge when it comes to Cy Young Award to Garrett Cole. Better ERA, more strikeouts. The 20 and 5 record is a better winning percentage than 21 and 6. I think the 20 game win is sort of that magical number. So getting that win for Cole today was big. But I think, you know, you asked me two weeks ago, I think Verlander had it, especially after throwing that no hitter and doing what he did. I'm now back on the Cole train. I think he wins the Cy Young barely. It'll be very close. But that would be my prediction. I'd love to hear yours if you disagree or agree. You can leave that in the comment section below, please. And thank you. But that's how I see it. Either way, the Astros will have the Cy Young Award winner and the runner-up. So I really don't care. But my personal opinion, I think Cole is just a little bit better. More strikeouts and less innings and better winning percentage. So And better ERA. So, yeah. He's got Verlander beat in almost every single category except the whip. And he's only .09 ahead of Verlander. So that's my Cy Young breakdown. Jordan Alvarez, without a doubt, will be the unanimous unanimous MV or rookie of the year. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't. There's other people out there that have had pretty good rookie seasons, like in the National League. Pete Alonso will win that. He's probably unanimous there. But nobody can touch Jordan and what he was able to do in the limited time he actually had here at the big league level. He's just there's nobody even close, really. So. And he wasn't even a guy a lot of people were thinking of going into the year as a guy coming up to make a huge, as big an impact as he actually did. You know, they have like Vladdy Guerrero Jr., you know, Bo Bouchette. They have, well, Toronto's got like three of those guys, even Kevin Biggio, that are like second-generation players. But, yeah, like Vladdy Guerrero Jr. was probably the people most people, I think, were picking going into the year. There's a few others I'm forgetting. But it's Jordan Alvarez who's going to win Rookie of the Year. That's settled, done with in my eyes, and I'm sure any Astros fans will agree with that wholeheartedly. And then uh, MVP, I mean, Bregman's got a chance, but he's probably going to fall second to Mike Trout. Could be wrong. I just, you know, I think the whole thing is kind of screwed up. Most valuable player, MVP. Most valuable player. Think about that. How can Mike Trout be the most valuable player if their team can't sniff the playoffs? He's playing under no pressure. Bregman, on the other hand, playing with a team full of superstars who's gone to the playoffs three consecutive years, he is playing with pressure, and he continues to come through. I just think that this whole thing, like the MVP award is, isn't going to the most valuable player. It's going to the player who has the best stats, basically. But it's most valuable player. So I, I just think that award you know, shouldn't go to Trout just because put him on a good team and team that goes to the playoffs. I'm not saying he'd be bad, but I just like what, I'd like to see him play with you know, some pressure. And he hasn't done it. I mean, you line up the numbers, he's better than Bregman in most categories, I'd say, but... You know, Bregman's right there with him. So even if, if Trout's got him beat in most categories, it's it's not by a wide margin. It's very close. So, you know, uh, Bregman's probably not going to win it, though, because that's just how the award goes. I disagree. But that's just how things work when it comes to MVP. So, yeah. But, you know, we'll root for him. I just don't think it'll happen, but we'll hope and pray. But we're not here to really – try to wrap up these awards we're here to try to win a world series so i won't even go too far into beating down how that award should be handled but even though i already did but anyway so yes that's just sort of the recap of our best players of course springer you know altuve brantley bregman alvarez correa i guess i could dive into that right now so correa dealing with the back still he was back, and they were sort of easing him back into the lineup, only having one rehab start, really. So he was basically playing every other day, and they were bringing him back. And, you know, he had two home runs in one game, and it's like, all right, he's back. And then a plane flight to Seattle, 
upsets his back, it stiffens up, so we'll keep him out. And they decide, you know, we're going to pull the plug on him for the rest of the regular season, and hopefully he's ready to go by Friday. I am so sick and tired of this. I don't even care right now if Correa plays in the playoffs or not. I really don't. I'm just I'm done with him. I'm done putting up with the injuries. I, I want him out of Houston, okay? I will say, I used to say this. I don't know if the Astros, this is what I used to say. I just want to say that. I didn't think the Astros can win a World Series without Correa. When I go back to 2017, he was a huge part of our road to winning the World Series. And I just don't know who would fill that void if we didn't have him. But you have Michael Brantley. You have Jordan Alvarez. I'm just done with Correa, just period. I mean, he's been good when he's been playing, but he just doesn't play because he's hurt constantly. Yeah, the rib thing, he was out a month for that. And you got the back thing that continues and continues to cause issues for him. He's only, what, 24? Maybe 25, 24, 25. I don't know. He's still young, but that's pretty young to have back issues that just don't seem to go away. That's how the back works. I understand that. But I'm just so sick and tired of every single year. It's something else. And if this back thing doesn't get cured, because he went into this year saying he felt great. Remember? He said, listen, I feel 100%. My back feels amazing. And then something popped up right before the season started because let's not forget, he did not start the season. Alemnis Diaz played the first three games at shortstop because something popped up. And then you had the masseuse, the rib crack. That, that, that was a freak injury that I don't even know if we all believe what actually happened happened or what he claims what happened. And then the back. So I'm just I'm done with him. You know, if he helps in the postseason, great. If he doesn't, I don't really care. I don't think we need him. I really don't. And I think that's going to show because I don't think the Astros are going to pay the money um, that he's going to be due. They won't pay it. They'll let him walk, and I would be down with that. Good. Fine. Sign Springer to a five-year deal. Even though he's, you know, well into his 30s, I'd rather he be here knowing that, you know, he can play, you know, 100, 150 games a year than have Correa barely get to 100 if you're lucky. Let him go be injured for another team. I'm just sick and tired of Springer, or not Springer, Correa. I just, I'm ready to pull the plug on this. I'm done. Hopefully he'll be ready to go Friday because they are better with him in the lineup. I'm not going to say that, but I, going forward into the coming years, I'm not putting up with Correa being injured every single year. And it's not like it's just a short stint. He misses, you know, a few months. Just, I'm, I'm done with that. So, that's my take there. That's the biggest injury when it comes to um, going into this postseason. Uh, you have Brad Peacock back, Ryan Presley back. So, you know, those are the big ones uh, bullpen-wise. Colin McHugh is in, insignificant. Even if he was back, he wouldn't make our postseason roster. I didn't want to break that down going into uh, the postseason. Before I do that, uh, everything's wrapped up. I talked about no tiebreakers tomorrow, so the way things are going to shape out, I'll give you the seeding first, the AL here. So the Astros, of course, have that number one best record in all the baseball seed. Yankees, two. Twins, three. A's with the first wild card spot and the Rays with the second. So we'll be playing the winner of that series. I really don't care who we play. I kind of want to play Oakland just because I just would rather play Oakland. They won six of the last eight against us, and they played very well. But we would line up our – Oakland might be the easier matchup just because Tampa Bay has got the pitching, you know. It's usually what I start to think about what starters could match up with ours. And if they have Charlie Morton, Blake Snell, and Tyler Glass no right, uh, that would stack up pretty well with ours. So the way I see it is I'd, I'd probably rather face Oakland because they don't have the pitching. They just don't. I mean, Mike Fire, Sean Manaya, and a bunch of other people. I mean, we don't play 
we haven't played Oakland well here of late, and we just don't play Tampa Bay well, period. So, I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that we would beat both these teams. That's not to say they couldn't beat us, but we would be favored pretty heavily. Like I said, anything short of a World Series win is going to be a failure in my eyes and most of the big Astros fans that know this team pretty well. So, yeah, there's that. I'd, I'd just rather face Oakland. I think now that I think about it, they're actually the easier matchup anyway, and I kind of want to prove them. I think that they think they can play us because they played us well six of the last eight, like I mentioned. So I want to play them to put them in their back in their place. So that's the way the AL uh, looks as things go. And then for the NL, of course, the Dodgers have that number one seed best record uh, in the league there. You get the Braves at two, the Cardinals three, have the Nationals as the first wild card team, and the Milwaukee Brewers as the second. So we'll see how things play out there. I'll be rooting for the Braves. Um, you know, I'd ra rather see a different team in the World Series than the Dodgers for the third straight year, but, you know, I'd rather see the Braves, and I think the Braves can actually give the Dodgers a run for their money. I wouldn't necessarily pick them to win, but I think that that would be a pretty competitive series. So, yeah, I'll be watching all these playoff games one way or another, so be interesting this is when baseball gets super fun and and you know I've, i haven't paid a lot uh, real close attention to a lot of the games the ashes have played the last week or so i mean i get updates on my phone and i'll switch over and check up on them here and there but i haven't done a lot um but you know i got the scores right here in front of me so i know exactly what happened and keeping track of sort of you know the cy young breakdown came down to these last two days but that was that was sort of the big thing these last two days, and you know the week, just trying to get wins any way possible to keep your best record. So anyway, wrapping that up. Now I want to get into sort of the playoff roster, and I haven't even thought about this at all. So I'm just going off what I know, and I'll count them down here. So 25 man, five game series. Usually you'll carry an extra position player rather than a pitcher because it's a shorter series and you can switch your rosters up uh, if you move on and advance to the league championship series so we'll see here what I can get to so pitching wise of course you're going to have Justin Verlander Garrett Cole Zach Greinke I'm you know a few people on the fence here. Wade Miley, and we'll talk about Abraham Torr in a little bit, but I am not – Wade Miley is not proven. I would not – I would skip over him. Jose Urquidy and Brad Peacock. Use those two in the game four if you have to. So those are the two guys right there. Comes to pitchers in the bullpen. Of course, you're going to have Osuna, Presley, Harris – you're at eight there. You'll have Chris Davinsky will make it. He's going to be a guy, the way I would use him, he's basically, with no lefties, you won't have a left-handed reliever on your team unless you do carry Wade Miley. So that's where he might be valuable. So you, I'm already running into issues here because if you don't, it, it's really between Davinsky and Miley, like, if Miley makes this postseason roster, it would be in the bullpen to get lefties out would be my guess. But Davinsky is also, even though he's a right-handed pitcher, he's usually called in to get left-handers out. So it's a, it's a tough one for me, um, debating between. Yeah, so I'm sitting at eight pitchers. I'm going to wait on that. It'll be either Miley or Davinsky. I don't see both of them making it. I see one of them. And then you'll have Rondone. You have an 8, 9. Rondone. I'm trying to think. So you got the big three. You got your Keaty and Peacock. That's five. You got Asuna. You got Presley. You got Harris. That's eight. 
I mean, Rondone, maybe. I'm trying to think. They, they carrying. I'm trying to think here. So, all right, let's just stick with what we got so far. So we got eight pitchers, right? I got the five. When you add in your Keedy and Peacock, and then the three Harris Presley Osuna. It's eight. Let's just stay with the eight there for now, and we'll fill in that position player. So, of course, Chirinos and Maldonado, Guriel, Diaz, Altuve, Correa, Bregman, Springer, Alvarez, Reddick, I'm at 10, I believe, with that, Brantley, it's 11 plus 8, so 11 plus 8, 20, <laughs> what is 11 plus 8, I can't believe, am I like over the 25 right now, that sounds like that's more, it's like 20, golly, I can't believe I got to do this here, <laughs> It's only 19. 11 plus 8 is 19. So you're looking at 19. You'll add Mariznick. That'll be 20. You'll add a Miles Stroll. That'll be 21. We're going to add either a Miley or a Davinsky, which will be 22. You're looking at three more people. Rondone would be 23. Or 20, 23, that sounds right. And, I mean, you'll have room for... I'm forgetting somebody, I'm sure of. But, I mean, you have Toro waiting there. You have Kyle Tucker waiting there. I kind of do like Tucker. But you got four or two more openings. And you'd probably... You know, Biagini won't make it. Talked about CNL Perez. Framber Valdez, they're not making it. Ryan Abreu's not making it. You'll have either Miley or Davinsky. It's hard for me to see both of them making it. So, I mean, there's really two opening spots. Toro might grab one. I think it'll be either, like, Stroll's going to be there for base running. But for another, you know, Stroll can also play shortstop if you need him to, but you also have Diaz there to play. Um, the infield, any spot if you need him. So I'm thinking, yeah, I said Marisnik, yeah, so that's another outfielder for you, along with Miles Straw. I think you'd be looking probably at Toro over Kyle Tucker just so you have more depth infield-wise, but it really wouldn't matter because you have Diaz and Straw, like I said, could play short or the outfield. I mean, personally, I'd probably rather have Kyle Tucker over Toro just because I think he's a better hitter. Can hit for a little bit of power. He's shown us a little bit more. Toro hasn't done a whole lot. But you do have two empty spots. So, I mean, if you're adding another pitcher, I'm trying to think because I know I'm forgetting somebody when it comes to pitching. But... Joe Smith. Joe Smith will probably make the roster. Joe Smith and I'll say Kyle Tucker. So Toro's out. And like I said, it'll either be Miley or Davinsky, but it won't be both. But I'll go ahead and go on a limb here and I'll say Chris Davinsky over Wade Miley. So Miley and Toro are left out. Everybody else that I mentioned will be there. So Joe Smith, the extra pitcher along with Hector on down. So just to go through our 25 real quick, once more. Pitching, Verlander, Cole, Granke, Urquidy, Peacock, Joe Smith, Hector on down, Chris Stavinsky, Heck, hold on. Got the five. Joe Smith, Hector on down, Chris Stavinsky, Will Harris, Ryan Presley, 
Roberto Osuna. 11 pitchers. 11 pitchers. So you're at 11. And now let's go Chirinos, Maldonado, Gurriel, Diaz, Altuve, Correa, Bregman, Jordan Alvarez, Jake Marisnik, Miles Straw. That's 10. George Springer, Josh Reddick. That's 12 plus 11. Two more. Who am I forgetting? Kyle Tucker. And Galley. Who am I leaving out? <laughs> uh, 24, right? I think. We were just talking about this too, but 24, you know, talked about. I can only count on one hand right now because I'm holding hand, one hand with the mic. So this is kind of put the mic down real quick, and I can count with two hands to make things easier here. All right. Pitchers Verlander, Cole, Granky, Yurkidi, Peacock. You'll have Joe Smith. Hector Rondon, Chris Davinsky, Will Harris, Ryan Presley, Roberta Osuna, that's 11 pitchers, Chirinos, Maldonado, Gurriel, Diaz, Altuve, Correa, Bregman, Michael Brantley, Jordan Alvarez, George Springer, Josh Reddick, Jake Marisnik. Did I say that? I don't think I did. Jake Marisnik, Miles Straw, and Kyle Tucker. There's your 25. That's the way I would construct things. I think Marisnik and Straw were two people I left out. But that is 25. So that's, that's where I'll cap things. I probably will be wrong with one or two people. If I'm right, I, des I should deserve major props for that. But that's the way I'd wrap things up. And I also will wrap things up there. Um, of course, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I will be coming back to you. So the Astros don't play till Friday, and they'll play Friday, Saturday, have, Friday and Saturday have an off day on Sunday. So I will talk to you a week from today and wrap up, just talk about those two games, rosters, things like that, and how things are looking so far. So it will be exactly a week. Fall goes as planned. And I'll catch you back up with everything else going on. Uh, of course, the wild card winners, one of which we'll be playing, and how the other series are looking. But getting excited, definitely, you know, football is a big thing for me right now, of course, you know, with the season. But baseball is going to be back in full swing here for me as a fan, uh, starting on Tuesday with the wild card game. So I'll wrap things up there. I'm coming up close to 30 minutes, but yeah, good. Everything's good. Uh, I like where we're at. I think we have the best roster. Now it's time to go out and prove it. So, yeah, hit that subscribe button. Like I said, leave the comments. Do all that good stuff. Give this video a like. And uh, I also will be looking to bring on guests during the postseason. I had a couple friends today that were on the edge. Uh, you sort of have to plan these things in advance, and I haven't done a very good job of that. But I'll try to bring either uh, one of my good friends, Christian, or George on. Um Keegan, of course, is in Minnesota. Pat, uh, he's got other things he's got to deal with. So those are the only two other guests I've actually had throughout the year. So my other good friends that are right here in Sugar Land or the Houston area, hopefully I'll be able to bring one or maybe both on for an upcoming podcast during the postseason. But do all that good stuff on YouTube. Again, I'll talk to you in a week, and we'll wrap things up there, and we'll see you then.